Good day, everyone. This day is sports wraps. That's what's going on. There's so much going on in the world of sports right now. Three major sports are happening. It is baseball playoffs, which is what we're looking at right now. Then I'm going to go into the week five review of the football file. Uh, that's interesting. And then we have the long-awaited release of the NHL file. I'm not putting my face on camera right now because I've been up all night working on this, and I refuse to show you how tired I am. So we will go over everything. Uh, this I'm sure this is going to be at least a 10-minute video, so there's just time to go over. All right, let's talk baseball first. So apparently today, I think this is happening. Did, I thought Houston knocked off Cleveland already. I haven't even been paying attention. been <laughs> running around so much. Don't know what lines are, where these lines are correct here or what yet, but apparently, oh yeah, I don't think these lines are correct yet at all. It does like Houston to finish this off here, and it likes Boston to finish it off against the Yankees tonight with Porcello beating Sabathia. Sabathia does come to play in these games, though, so wow. That's going to be interesting. I'm probably going to be betting some hockey tonight, which I'll show you later in the video. We've also got some potentials. It looks like the Dodgers taking out Milwaukee here as it's starting to do some simulations down the road here. Um, so that's baseball for now. That's free file. Have fun with that. Like I said, free playoffs, good times. So let's talk about NFL football. So, we did some stuff. I did some work on the file. It was a really busy weekend. I was out and about um, up in New England and back. There was an impromptu UVM alumni club hockey game, a club that I started back in 2001. And I didn't even know that was going on. And I accidentally found out about it. And I had my hockey gear with me. There will be some video at the end of this video of me sucking on the ice. It was awesome. Uh, one of those... Uh, you know, serendipitous moments or whatever. And so I got delayed and it cost me getting football stuff done. But I did some work and, and really started to make this thing try to look like a baseball file. There are so many things going on here. Um, basically, we'll, we'll go game by game and then I want to show you the pick history sheet where I've done some really interesting work to show you how we are winning based on different types of uh, things that we look at when we determine what we consider a win. I'll show you what I mean. So the Thursday night game, which I was at in Fox, but we got to start doing this, right? Go to big games because this is, that, that'd be awesome. Um, I will talk, we talked about that, but we'll go on to another game here. Baltimore is a clean miss, clean miss hard. The win percentage was 56%. It was predicting a tie score. This game ended up being a really low score. This was just a complete miss all around. I don't know what I did wrong with Baltimore. Cleveland's playing better. Cleveland's not that bad. So we'll see how this changes next week. But that was just a clean miss. Kansas City was a clean hit. We liked Kansas City. We predicted a lot of points. They scored a pretty good amount of points. Uh, they even did better against Jacksonville. Their defense picked it up a little better than it was showing. So maybe somebody come back off injury or something like that. People coming back off injury is a, oh, it's like a, it's an Achilles of this file. It cost us this game here. Edelman on the Patriots would have raised the projected score above 20-something. It would have been 20-something to 20-something less for Indianapolis had we had Edelman in there, and we didn't. So I, I bet you that's what happened uh, on Kansas City's defense or something there. Although I think Blake Bortles throws a lot of interceptions deep in the red zone. That was trouble. Tennessee and Buffalo. So this game was another – now I'm not going to call this a clean miss because it was a clean miss win percentage-wise, team stat-wise, and that's because Tennessee had a lighter schedule – to start and Buffalo got smoked early and they managed to pull out a win. So they're, they're just not being counted. I guess they're not as bad as we thought. What's really intriguing about this game and what picks, so it picks the wrong team at Tennessee, but this is distorted here for some reason because it's early in the year. What, what really was crazy was the projected score was actually 12 12. Sometimes it's for somehow it switched after injury update or something to 13 11, but it was at 12 12 when I posted it on Thursday, I think. And that's insane that it ended up 12-13 because who on earth would have predicted that the final score of that game would be like that? And that's what it was. So I want to see – I'll show you how the, the projected score point totals based on the offensive and defensive roster scores did some very, very tracking things in a few of these games. It didn't hit everything, but it did weirdly hit things. Uh, so it was cool. All right, now uh, – so I don't consider that a total miss even though – like I never would have thought Tennessee's not a very good team. I never would have – giving them credit for this 57%. I know that's distorted from their schedule. So uh, Giants and Panthers, this was a clean win, sort of. It predicted a 2020 score here, but it had the 50% here. So you know, we can't have this both ways, basically. 
you know, what's the difference between Tennessee and Carolina here? They both have very similar win strength percentages. So am I, am I BSing you here saying that, that this is better than this? Um, that's a good question. Carolina should have won this game handierly, handierly, <laughs> more handily. I don't know if they let the Giants back in late because they could. Uh, I don't know. You should. I feel like we should have had a point prediction total of the Panthers scoring more points. I'm surprised we didn't there. But it, it does count as a win for the file um, on the win strength side. Broncos, this Broncos Jets clean miss again. Now, this is only 12% at least, so it wasn't as high as 25, which is our cutoff. But we had them putting up points. They didn't put up the points we thought, and the Jets explode out of nowhere. So I don't know what happened here. I guess the Jets' defense held up. Broncos are not at home. There could be a home and away problem with the Broncos. You can see that I, I, I'm sometimes weaving in home factor and away factor. Broncos, if we had put in – I'm actually using the away factor on the point prediction total here, I think. Oh, man. I don't know. I, don't, I guess not enough games in the schedule yet. It's only week five, right? Atlanta and Pittsburgh. Clean win, although this was only 5%. But our point, look at our point predictions were, were great here. We thought they were going to put up a lot. They put up almost exactly the same amount, and they held Atlanta to a little bit less because their defense, I guess, played a little better. And we thought, and look at Atlanta's terrible defense also being terrible. So I like that. That's that's a win there. Green Bay and Detroit. Now here we had the point prediction right, but we had the win strength flipped on here. So these are things we need to watch out for to figure out how we play these. If you, there's nobody with spreads, a tough one. I mean, I don't know how you win this. Green Bay's up. It's, it's tough, but we did have it, you know, point projection wise. Miami and the Bengals. This one was nice. This one we had the win strength. We had the point, them winning by four. They win by ten, so they cover the spread. So we don't catch the spread bet there, but we do catch a win at negative two fifty. I like seeing something like this. I'm working on this bet score over here, and I like seeing, um, I like seeing where this is what we want it to do. Is we want the bet score to be a positive green number here and a negative red number where that we get the win. You know, we had the right win strength. We had got better points, pretty good score, and then that's what happens. So that that's a that's a that's a solid way to win right there. That's a nice pick. Oakland and the Chargers, similar. Chargers do pull this off. Twenty six ten. I don't know why our predicted score is all screwy there. That's weird. I thought we had Chargers winning on a predicted score, but I guess we didn't somehow. That's weird. Because Oakland's offense was heavily. I don't know why Oakland's offense looks so good. Well. So we, we get on win strength, we don't get it on point score there. So it's not perfect. Arizona and San Francisco, clean miss. Arizona comes out of nowhere and wins a game, puts up 20 points. I guess they're apparently a football team again. Figured San Francisco can blow it. This is a bad miss right here. So it's a bad miss. Chalk this up. You see a round number like this under the win strength, you can be assured that this is because there aren't enough guys. I know we said we're starting here in week five, and we are. But it's still only four weeks of data, and you know this really gets great around weeks halfway through the season, week eight and on. Minnesota and the Eagles. Eagles lose this game. We had the Eagles everywhere except point prediction, where we had the Vikings. All right, um, we have them score a little more than they do. I, I don't see this as a clean win either way. Uh, given that there was conflict here, which is probably maybe this means stay away. So you know we don't want to play something unless we really like a bet score. When I get the bet scores working properly. This is a good win, although they didn't win by as much as we thought, but they did win. They did hold up and do what they're supposed to do. The Rams keep winning, so that's a good win. That was our number one rank, and we did get a win out of that. We would have predicted a spread win, which we didn't get, though. Dallas and Texas. Now, here I like this game. I noticed it's low 6%. I noticed it's 21-12. I, I feel like this game is a win. We hit Houston. Don't like the bet score here. This should be yeah, – got to figure out why this is – Wrong, probably because of the line, but this is nice to hit that. Um, they don't hit the spread though, but they do win the game. But we didn't have, you know, once again, sort of a flip, stay away. And then this is a clean win. This is a huge one, 49 15. Look at how great our point prediction is on this game. Super predictable. Uh, I, I bet the Saints and they won, so good for them. So, what does this all mean? Well, if you look at the pick history sheet, I now have a pivot table for every single type of how are we doing. 
So for example, how are we doing by wind strength, right? Which one's wind strength? Wind strength is this one right here. This is the one that's based off team stats, just automatically whatever the team stats for the season are. How is that doing? Well, that was eight and seven this week. We're not counting profitability yet, but I will because well, we'll do it next week. We're still working on the bet score situation. We were eight and seven, not great. Um, you can kind of sort this out by what were the win strengths. You could say, you know, put the win strengths up here, and this can sort in order of the highest one. You know, so this is like we won with, let's do this, let's freeze paints here. That's better. Um, we, this was the Rams. So, we, you know, we won one, lost two, one went back and forth, back and forth. Doesn't really help us out. We get to our, we end up being here two, four, five, and four above 25%. You know, it's nothing to write home about, but it's still early. So let's look at, when we look at this, not by what, what won by win strength, but what won by projected score. Here we're better than eight and seven. We're actually nine and six. Interesting, right? This is why I thought the file had a better week than it actually did because I felt this. I felt this nine six, and I thought, well, what, why do I feel like the file did some really cool things? And I was like, oh, well, what's this right here? This is the projected score margin team of reference, and I'm still working on all my formulas here because there's a lot of stuff going on right here that's calculating out, making sure that we're making the right pick by the spread and the right pick by uh, projected score versus whether that beat the spread and stuff like that. So what that's talking about here is this is saying that we, you know, based on what we thought the projected score of the game was going to be, for example, we thought that the Rams were going to win by 36 points, right? I, we thought down here that the Rams were going to win 53 to 17. They didn't win by that much, but they won the game, right? So they won the game. They, they hit the yes, and they won that game. Who did we think was going to win by 33 points? That's a phone i got to answer eventually here. Um, we thought the Saints were going to win by 33 points. They beat the Redskins by almost that amount. We thought somebody was going to win by 25 points, and they lost. We thought that the Niners were going to win by 25 points, and they lost. We thought... The Chiefs were going to win by 14 points, and they won. We thought Pittsburgh was going to win by 12 points, and they won, right? So see what, see how this is kind of nice? This is saying that here in week five, we just look at week five in the slicer there, that of these top – I mean, look at that right there. This is interesting. Where we thought that we were going to get a win of four points or more, we went five and two. So we thought the team by projected score was going to win by five points or more. We went five and two. That is really cool because I thought we still missed some point projections in some odd ways, but this is really, really interesting. So that was cool to see. Now, how about if we look at how are we doing if we're looking at did the projected score beat the point spread? And the answer there is we're getting no real sign that it's, it's, you know what it is? It's very tough to beat the spread. That's what you'll learn. The spread is tough because I, and this is why I like to focus on the money line so much. I feel like teams play to win games, play, teams hopefully don't play to beat spreads. So while I'll keep track of all this information about the spreads for those who care about it, I hardly ever mess with it and I'm going to be judging our gauge, like basically what I would want to do here is almost remove this completely because I don't care. Um, but I'll leave it in there for now because what, whatever. So you see how how I see some very interesting things here about whether or not we're winning games based on our projected point score prediction. And we're going to weave that in to more win strengths this week. I'm going to try to get my rosters updated so I can account for people that are coming back that are significant players. That's another huge part of this. And I think it's going to be incredible. So after we're 14 minutes in, Welcome da, 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 to the NHL Pick Scrap 2018. There'll be a whole video just on hockey maybe later today, I think, or, or very soon. Um, just a quick glance today. I, I have so much going on here, I cannot even begin to start because we're already so long into this video. But we got similar things. We got win strengths, we got money lines, we got projected scores, we have goalies, we have a contribution score by goalie, by team. 
and by lineup and starters and everything and I spent all night doing it and it's done and we got some weights here so I'm I don't know if this is going to do anything because it's so early in the season you don't have you got like three two or three games worth of data in here there's you need whatever um <laughs> we'll see but it's doing something already and I'm going to be betting some hockey and watching some hockey tonight because I'm excited. So get ready for hockey and watch me be a goofball on the ice up in Vermont. And may your picks be winning, everyone, on this terrific Triple Tuesday. The hockey file will be released tomorrow. First thing we need to do is throw the goalie off this game. That's how we start any hockey.